In our previous video, we talked about the role of the revenue management analyst, so we would be prepared to talk about Littlewood's role. And uh, just to review quickly, you know, we said the RM analyst is his job is to basically decide who to take and who not to take on a flight if he's got limited capacity. So in our example, this RM analyst was working a flight. He had one seat left to sell. His job was to uh, determine whether he should take the $100 guy or the $200 customer, given some expectation that that $200 customer would arrive. So now let's talk about uh, Littlewood's rule. Littlewood, Littlewood worked for an airline, and he understood this concept very well. But of course, uh, the way airlines manage their inventory isn't by a uh, RM analyst sitting behind a desk taking these phone calls. They need some inventory control mechanism. They need to decide ahead of time how many seats they want to protect, remember that term from the last video, how many seats they want to protect or save for the high fare customer and protect them against being sold to low fare customers. They need to decide ahead of time how many seats they want to uh, save for high fare customers. And that is the protection level. And then they load that into the reservation system and the system manages the inventory. So that's where our, our optimization models uh, come in. We, we run something in advance of the event and then we let the inventory control system uh, manage the, the, the request. So let's write down Littlewood's rule here and um, uh, we're going to say, yeah, I have all the terms here. So uh, it's an inequality. On the left hand of the inequality, we simple ha simply have uh, the low fare, FL, in this case is, is 100. And on the right hand, high hand side of the inequality, we have fare high and an expected value. Oops, that's not an inequality, is it? Let's see. Let's try that again. You know, um, greater than or equals. And some probability statement here. X, in this case, X is the demand for fare class H, or the higher fare, greater than theta, where theta is the protection level for, um, for that fare class. So we're going to see for theta H is the protection level. X is the demand for H. And the, uh, this, this statement here is the expected value of waiting for that customer. So remember, this, this starts to look very familiar uh, I hope, uh, to the, the conversation we had in the last video. It's just a little bit more formal. So this FL, this is the, the low fare. This is the fare the uh, analyst could take with certainty if this guy calls first. And remember we said this is really like an expected value, right? The, the probability, if this, if this customer is standing in front of the analyst, the probability of that customer arriving is one. One times the uh, fare is the expected value in this case. So you have the expected value of the low fare customer on the left side of the inequality. And on the right hand side, you have an expected value. We'll talk a little bit more about what this means. But we have the, the fare, the $200, times some probability of that fare being sold. The difference that we have here now is that we have, we have theta. And in this case, the, the uh, variable is theta. We're going to find theta that, that makes this inequality hold. We're going to keep on changing theta. We're going to lower theta, in this case, until the inequality no longer holds. And that's going to be our answer. That's how many seats we're going to save for the higher fare customer. So take a look at this, this probability statement. And this is, um, some of you will, will think that looks familiar. Some of you won't. Don't worry about it for now. It just means uh, that uh, there's a way you can calculate the probability of at least theta customers arriving. So X is the, uh, the demand for H. Uh, theta is the number of seats we're going to save for H. And given the number of seats that we are going to protect for H, there's some probability associated with that. We do need to understand this probability statement in depth but that's going to be done in subsequent videos. So I don't want you to get too hung up on that now. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to discuss that in detail later. So let's take a look now at, um, let's put some, put some numbers to this and see if we can understand exactly what Littlewood was 
trying to do here. So let's pick, we're going to pick some protection levels, some values for theta. We're going to pick some probabilities, and this is, I'm just going to make this up to make the, the math look good. So I'm just copying this probability statement, theta h. Okay, this is a challenge to my uh, drawing skills. And then we have some expected value. We're just going to write the expected value uh, given that protection level. And then uh, does the inequality hold? Because really, that's how you find the solution. You keep on changing theta until the inequality no longer holds. All right. So let's just choose some numbers here uh, to make this work. Let's say we start, and you just choose a starting point. There's really no rhyme or reason behind it. Let's say you you select six seats. <clears throat> now you have you have some number. In our previous example, we only had one seat left to sell on the flight. Uh, in this case, we have some number of seats that um, are remaining to sell. Um, we're not going to we're not going to decide exactly what that is now. We just assume there's some number of seats, but there's also enough demand for the flight that we we have a decision to make. We can't accept everybody. We have to deny some low fare customers. We're going to um, set aside a certain <clears throat> number of seats for the high fare customers. So let's say if we chose to protect six seats for the high fare customer and when we look at our probability function and we say that the probability that I sell at least six seats is 0.2 and let's say that again the probability that I sell at least six seats because we we aren't concerned with the probability that the previous five arrived we need to make our decision on the six seats all right, so it's, it's the probability that at least six seats are, are, are sold, or at least there's demand for at least, at least six of the high fare seats um, is 0.2. So the expected value, so we have, um, let's see, 0.2 times the high fare, which is, so this is, we're going to take this equation here, um, doing a little bit backwards here, but 0.2, the probability, times the higher fare, which is 200, is what? 160, okay? And we just look and see if the inequality holds. Well, on the left-hand side, I have uh, $100. That's not going to change. On the right-hand side, I have 160, all right? Does the inequality hold? Well, um, $100 is greater than, oops, uh, <laughs> I was afraid my example wasn't going to work, but it's really my math that doesn't work. Huh? Let's try that again. Let's see. Let's try that again. Wow. Okay. 0.2 times 200 is 40. Now we have on the right-hand side the expected value is 40. Uh, does the inequality hold? And lo and lo and behold, it does. Thank goodness. Oh, look, I did that. 40. So uh, the expected value, so this is assuming again that the low fare customers arrive before the high fare customers. If the lower fare customer is standing in front of the RM analyst, uh, he's going to take that with certainty rather than wait that, uh, for the higher fare customer to arrive with a 0.2 probability because the expected value would be uh, only uh, $40. Does so the inequality hold? Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, and remember the rule is we continue to lower theta until the inequality doesn't hold. So now let's choose five. Let's say the probability of at least five uh, customers requesting that seat is 0.3. Now the expected value is 0.3 times 200. Uh, my math is improving, I think, $60 here. So now on this side you have uh, $60. I'm just going to erase that put in $60. Uh, does the inequality hold? Yes, it's still better to take this customer at $100 than to protect the fifth seat for $60 cust uh, for a $200 customer because the expected value is only $60. So does the inequality hold? Yes. Let's continue to lower our theta. In this case, uh, we're going to say that the probability that at least four seats being sold in the high fare class is 0.4. Uh, the expected value in this case is 4 times 200, which equals uh, 80. 
the inequality still holds. Yeah, well, if this is 80, then the inequality still holds. And finally, we're going to choose a value. We're going to lower theta to 3. Uh, the probability that uh, at least three seats are sold in the higher fare class is 0.6, let's say. Now we have 0.6 times 200. Our expected value is going to be above 100. 100. And now does the inequality hold? Well, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't because now, uh, now we have the uh, expected value on the right-hand side is 1, 120. Oh, sorry. One twenty, the inequality doesn't hold, and we find our protection level by moving up to the previous selection. So the protection level, given our forecast of demand, our forecast demand is going to give us a probability function. And given the probabilities associated with each one of these protection levels, we have just found that we'll maximize revenue by protecting four seats for the higher fare customers and allowing the rest of the seats to be sold for lower fare customers.